see? That's what I call smooth. Mm. That's the difference you get when you make it all. Look at that sky, man. It's like so high. No, no, no. That's what we call an optional illusion. There is a concerted government conspiracy to make us all think that the sky is very, very high. When in actual fact, the actual sky is less than 15 feet above our heads. What are you saying, Bilbo? That the stars and the planets and everything are not actually as high as we actually think? No, no. You could get to Pluto on a good pogo stick. Oh, you can see why they'd want to suppress that. You'd have everybody on trampolines, like emigrating to Jupiter. Exactly. Wait. Wait. What? What is it? Did you hear that? No! What is it, Bilbo? Oh. Get the camera! Oh. We haven't got a camera! Ah! Uh, what about a sketch pad? Go, Galadriel. That is final and conclusive, irrefutable clinical evidence of the existence of extraterrestrial life. Oh, wow. Well. Let's see the military establishment try to wriggle their way out of that one. Oh, nice one, Bill. Yeah. Initial objective achieved. Now locomoting to location one. Out. Procedure late. Cadet Finn, you are injuncted to use only Terran forms of communication from now until we are picked up by the mothership. Supervisor. Our landing was witnessed. We must abort the mission. A shipboard mind radar ensures that we are only observed by low credibility individuals of minuscule intellect. In this way, we guarantee that the bulk of humankind dismiss reports of our presence here as fancification. Fructal language only. Supervisor, I believe Cadet Niven has forgotten how to do the walk thing. I thought you were fully schooled in humanesque perambulation, Cadet Niven. Mm. Indeed, Supervisor, I graduated top of my class in introduction to walking and gained a commendation in walking briskly. Just give me a moment, it will all come back. Up, forward, down. Don't help him! Up, forward, down. Yes, that's it. Up, forward. Down. Yeah, it's all coming back. Up, forward, down. Now, this is the tricky bit. Up. 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 Other leg. Other leg. Right. Of course. Ah, oh, I have got some fantastic news. Go away, Harry. We've got a new assignment together. No, we haven't. Don't be like this, Rena. I know you've been pining. I found a giant cockroach in my shower on Friday. That is the one and only time I've thought about you in four weeks. So, you've been thinking about me while you're naked, you cheeky little thing. I was fully clothed, and I crushed it with the heel of my boot. 
OK, if you weren't thinking about me, what was this doing in the firing range? Only you, Harry, could find this a symbol of affection. Yes, what I find particularly interesting is that you uh, uncharacteristically missed with all five bullets. Everyone a bullseye. You're wasting vital time with this totally not convincing, hard to get routine, Rena. We've got a definite UFO tracing. What, they're putting us on little green moon duty? Well, I know it's not exactly a promotion. Promotion? Chasing flying saucers is one step up from traffic duty in this agency. What next? Rescuing kittens from trees? I've got a good feeling about this one. Yeah, I'm sick of your good feelings, Harry. I'm sick of you. I'm not partnering you anymore. Well, after 11 years, that's it. I've put up with you for long enough. This last fiasco nearly cost me my career, not to mention my life. You're still holding that against me, aren't you? Not long with your physical incompetence, your congenital cowardice and your obsession with imaginary illnesses. All oh, right, I suppose I'm just imagining I've got Garrelson syndrome and that my left arm's totally shrinking. Goodbye, Harry. Have a nice life. Rena. We're on this assignment together. It's an order? From the top. Great. Change legs. Up, forward, down. Change legs. Up, forward, down. Change legs. Stop! Forward. Stopping! Oh, that's another skull and tile, isn't it? Whoa. Thanks to Cadet Niven's hideously under-practiced ambulatory skills, we are now woefully short of our predicted schedule. In order to achieve our required targets, we are compelled to seek alternative and speedier transport. This will entail first-level contact with a member of the human species? That is so, and far sooner than anticipated. I volunteer, Supervisor, to conduct all concourse with any human that we encounter. I received meritorious praise for my communications fish. Skills. Yes. You will both remain silent throughout the whole duration of the contact. Observe and learn. We strike this pose to secure transport from a passing vehicle. And when the vehicle reaches visual range, we pivot the arm at the elbow, Vasti. Affecting a widening of the lips to demonstrate affability. How did you do that? I am unaware. Ah. Up, forward, down, change legs. Supervisor, that was indeed an impressive display of speedy travel. Most exhilarating. May we see that again? Supervisor. Supervisor? Is something amiss? It would appear the supervisor is now demonstrating the human skill of sleeping. Well, call me a lipper pumple, but to me, that's just showing off. What now, Cadet Flynn? I am at a loss to explain the supervisor's bizarre behaviour. Perhaps he is testing us. Setting us a conundrum to put us on our mettle. Then we shall not be found wanting, Cadet Niven. Between us, we will carry the supervisor until such time as he awakens. And we must... Assume our destination lies yonderly. Cadet Flynn, unfamiliar as I am with the specifics of the human anatomy, I cannot help but observe there is something less than correct with the supervisor's current appearance. All right. There is something wrong. He's, he's shorter somehow. Good grief. He's lost his hat. Yes, and that bit underneath it. His head. Yes, he's lost his hat and his head. Well, he must be around here somewhere. Stay here, Supervisor. We'll be right back. It's hopeless. We'll never find his head and his hat in this light. We have to find them. Otherwise, he'll have nothing to tip when he meets a female. Wait. 
Wait, I think I've got them. Is that them? I think so. Supervisor? Is that you? Can you hear me? I don't think he can hear me. His viewing orbs are open. Then, either he is deliberately ignoring me, or this isn't him. Perhaps we should keep looking around a bit. If we get the wrong head and hat by mistake, then the supervisor's going to be mad as a molten mulambolo. These are them. I recognize the hat band. This is such a relief. Crisis averted. There you are. I think you'll agree, Supervisor, that Cadet Niven and I passed your little test with flying colours. Perhaps now we can proceed. Now what? Perhaps you didn't put it on quite correctly. Clearly, we require some form of adhesive material in order to fix the supervisor's head on with any degree of permanency. Agreed. It would seem, therefore, we should advance to a bending establishment in order to purchase such materials. By what mode should we undertake this journey? By the supervisor's new ultra-fast procedure? I recommend we proceed utilising the difficult yet efficacious walking method of travel until such time as sufficient vehicles are available to impel us at the required rate. Up, forward, down, change legs. <laughs> change legs. I never imagined a decent material vending establishment could have occurred so rarely on a so-called civilised planet. Ten, good Edwin. I detect the portentous vibrations of an oncoming vehicle in my things on the side of my head. Let us avail ourselves of its propulsion. <laughs> Unnecessary. This is not a female. Are you mad? You could have killed us all. Good fellow, we were merely attempting to secure increased acceleration from your vehicle. It was your rather perilous manoeuvring that occasionated the danger and rendered your craft ditch-bound. You are mad. We were merely seeking transport to an adhesive vendors in order to repair our companion, who is temporarily broken. <laughs> In his current separated state, he is unable to ambulate efficiently. Unlike you. Cadet Flynn, may I volunteer for the adhesive materials purchasing mission? Are you ready for the boiling cauldron of Terran contact? I have never been readier. Very well, Cadet Niven. The briefcase contains various forms of Terran purchasing commodities. Which should I use? As you should be aware, most of this planet operates on a petrol-based economic system. Of course. Yes. Remember your politeness protocols. Keep communication to a minimum. Do nothing that will compromise this mission. Cadet Flynn, I am perfectly capable of passing myself off as a fully-fledged member of the human species. Up. Forward. Down. Up. 
Sounds like this is the real thing, Rena. Classic description. Dark suits, old-fashioned hats, bizarre speech patterns. I think they're still around. Better be around. I've got a lot of ground to make up. Well, good morning to you. Just don't screw this one up, OK? <laughs> Pardon me, are you a female person? Am I what? Are you of the female persuasion? Last time I looked, I was. Sorry about that. I'm new here. Adhesive. Adhesive? Hmm. Does it facilitate the adhesion of one surface to another? Do you mean is it sticky? That's what I said. It's a cassette tape. Is it a sticky cassette tape? No. Are you positive? It does claim to be magnetic. Are you looking for sticky tape? I am. Over there. Hello, Jimmy. You're late this morning. Yeah, some idiots abandoned the truck down to Raiders Hill. Just dumped it. Keys, everything. Police are crawling all over it. Took me 20 minutes to get past. Anyone see what happened? Yeah, apparently they picked the driver up. He's renting on about two wheelos carrying a severed head. Sounds like one of them urban myths. Yeah, I reckon you're right. See ya. Bye. And where do you think you're going? Of course, I must complete my element of the transaction. Are you sure you'll need all this? Yes, I have a great deal of sticking to do. You're not from around here, are you? Yes, I am. Oh? Whereabouts? Same place as you, the planet Earth. And I would consider any assertion contrary-wise to be a scandalous slander. I knew it was going to be one of them days. Let's say 27.55. Just say when. Look, mister, I don't know what planet you're from. Earth. I told you, Earth. Either you give me some money now, or I'll scream out, and half a dozen beefy truckers will waltz right in through that door and dance the hornpipe on your spinal column. Your choice. People have such curious customs. In absolute frankliness, I'm not really in the mood for dancing. I prefer the more conventional method of payment. Now, you didn't want to be petroleum. Would this be more appropriate or this? Look, just give me some cash. 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 Cash? Cash. So, um, don't forget your change. What was the source of your delay, Cadet Niven? The vending female's mastery of Terran protocol was somewhat less proficient than the circumstances required. Look what I managed to wheedle out of her. But you did secure the adhesive. Only after some crafty bargaining on my part. Are you aware, Cadet Flynn, it is possible to purchase materials here by dancing with manly male personages? I tell you. The sooner we get the supervisor back in one piece, the better it will be for all of us. What is this tone? 
I discovered it in the inner pouch of the supervisor's jacket. It is a training instruction manual. I found it to be exceptionally illuminating. Are you sure you should be reading this? Supervisor finds it missing. He's going to be pretty darn mad once he gets his head back on. I'm convinced. He wishes us to demonstrate initiative and work things out for ourselves. As much as possible. For example, you may have noticed a strange cramping sensation in your midsection. Indeed I have. Accompanied by peculiar bubbling sounds. Apparently, we need to perform a function known as eating. Eating? Yes. Humans do eating on a regular basis. It involves the insertion into the largest facial orifice of a substance known as food. To what end do they submit themselves to this ignominy? To prevent the cramping sensations and bubbling noises. Well, why have the cramping and noises in the first place? I have not yet finished that chapter. There. Ah, that's a damned fine job, Cadet Flynn. If he's not fixed now, he never will be. Hello? Supervisor? How are you feeling, sir? Clearly, Cadet Niven, our initiative test remains uncompleted. I suggest we repair to the adjacent hostelry to submit ourselves to the food ritual. And the supervisor? We will have to carry him. Uh, supervisor, you really are making this difficult. certain that this procedure is requisite. Cadet, it is essential. I suppose then we must endeavour to acquire some food. Agreed. Mission accomplished. Do we not require some eating tools in order to cram this repulsive stuff into our orifices? Ah, many thanks, stout fellow. Now, where to begin? Cadet Flynn, you appear to have a thick, red, glutinous substance emanating from the holes in your mid-facial protuberance. Correct, Cadet Niven. I am leaking. These humans seem to require endless reams of adhesive tape. Are you gentlemen intending to eat or fight? Eat. Yeah? Eat what? Food. Just what I need, a couple of comedians. I beg your pardon, we are not from Comedia, nor any other planet in the Galaxis system. We are from Earth. What's the matter with your friend? Nothing. Looks pretty sick to me. He'll be fine once he has masticated some food. So what'll it be? Full breakfast? I think given our inexperience at this ritual, we had best start with half breakfast. Can it never? Agreed. Three half breakfast. Comedians. Spook! He is evinced we're from another planet. I think not. We have been thoroughly scrupulous in our deception. Tape, please. I doubt anyone even suspects we are anything other than regular citizens. This isn't the usual thing, Rena. I think something's gone wrong. Take that off. Nice driving, by the way. Got whiplash now. No, you haven't. Take that off. Off. All right. Something's definitely gone wrong. Right, three men. One of them has to be carried by the others. And the third one... <sighs> I've never seen footprints like these. He's thumping.
keeping his foot down with every step. It's as if he never learned to walk properly. The truck driver claimed one of them showed him a decapitated body. Said something like, his friend was temporarily broken. Sounds like they've lost their leader. Do you think we're going to find them? Two interplanetary visitors whose knowledge of Earth culture appears to be derived solely from early television broadcasts. Cutting around a decapitated body and its detached head and walking like cartoon giants. Hmm, they're going to be fairly tricky to spot. Mm. Actually, I think I really do have whiplash. Food. Looks squishier than I had anticipated. Ah, well, here goes. This is a lot trickier than I'd first imagined. Nearly as unpleasant as it looked. Well, right, the temperature is slightly higher than I'd anticipated, but not not disturbingly so. Supervisor, would you like some? He is refusing to open his orifice. Try these. Now, now, supervisor, don't be stubborn. Ah! Really. These Tehran adhesive materials leave a great deal to be desired. It must have rolled away. Excuse me, solemn featured fellow. Have you seen my companion's head? I always did think a circular head was a particularly poor design concept. Ah! Here he is. Where's his hat? Ah, here. You tape him up, I'll look for his hat. See what? Nothing. Ah. Ah. There, now perhaps we can conclude this eating business with some calm dignity. Thank you, Cadet Nimit. Frankly, I find the whole ritual pointless and dull. All right, now let's have any cylinders. Just stand up slowly and very gently raise your hands into the air. Are you addressing us? We buttoned the personages. In the air, nice and slowly. Is this a conventional element of the eating ritual? We must assume so. As I indicated, I have not yet finished the pertinent chapter. I'm asking you one more time. On your feet, arms in the air. Wait, I have it. This is the making of purchase by dancing with men method of payment. Ah, let's see. Now, we stand slowly. And then, um, like this. Shouldn't there be a musical noise to facilitate the mutuality of rhythm in this procedure? Uh, that wasn't so hard, was it? No. It was childishly easy. What are these for? Gifts. Splendid love offerings. This is so embarrassing. I'm afraid we have no trinkets or bracelets to offer in exchange. Ah. 
please accept this as a token of returned fondness. Put it down, son. You don't want to play rough with me. On the contrary, I'm prepared to play with you any game you wish, provided you explain fully the rules and objectives beforehand. Stop! Hold it right there, Sergeant. A female personage. I can't reach my hat. Try. Try it. What's your problem? You're letting these men go. Oh, am I? Show them a badge, Harry. It's a badge. Which badge? All of them. Take your pick, Sergeant. OK, I'm impressed. If you want them, take them. Take them. Get the restraints off. You wouldn't like to tell me what's going on here. You don't know, because you never saw it. All right. He's taken my bracelets. Love is such a fleeting thing. I know it's only a tiny point, but what about the rotting corpse in the corner there? You didn't see him either. Not even a clue. It didn't happen or you end your career on a bicycle. Perhaps, Cadet Niven, we had better be leaving likewisely. Where are you going? Well, we're not absolutely certain. Female personage, we... We are waiting for our companion to revive. Hmm. Perhaps we could offer you a lift. A lift? A ride in our car. Ah. Well, thanks awfully, but it will not be necessary for us to lift or ride in your car. But it would be helpful if you would drive quickly towards us and shunt us along for a while. I think you'll find it even more comfortable inside. Now what? We take them in, of course. Right, so they get incarcerated in a secret research unit, have surgical experiments performed on them, and uh, we never see them again. Or. Or... Or we let them go and follow them, find out what they're about first-hand for ourselves. Mm, right. Well, I prefer that let's keep our lives option presented by choice one. Oh, come on, Rena. All my life I've dreamed of this. We've got two of them, live ones. I mean, look at them, hardly likely to escape. You know, this is the only chance we've got to learn from them, where they're from, what they're doing here. Sooner or later, their friends are going to come looking for them. Right, think of that. A close encounter with an alien ship. OK, Harry. A small and piddling detail. What if they're the vanguard of an alien invasion fleet? Call me a cockeyed optimist, but I think the planet Earth's going to be safe enough. You think too much, Harry. Now, I'm taking them in. We've made one mistake too many. Rena. I'm taking them in. And the minute, the instant, the millisecond things look like they're getting out of hand and I can't take them in, I'm going to have to avoid their warranties. You are such a sweetie. Kindly female, our companion is ensconced in your vehicle. You can call me Rena. Before we undertake this voyage, female Rena, may we tender payment for the anticipated service provisionment? No, it's our pleasure. We insist. We wish to employ the traditional dancing method of payment. Cadet Niven. <laughs> Setting a rich and not altogether pleasant sensory input through the twin apertures of your front central facial protuberance. Indeed, I am, Cadet Fun Heaven. However, as yet one more example of poor humanoid design, the protuberance's holes are far too close together for me to efficate a bilateral fix on the source. Stop the car, Arena! What? Pull her over! I'm okay. It's ripe, all right. Ripe? He's humming like a barbershop quartet. I think we should call in, get a backup truck or something. No, I don't think they stand for being separated from their fragrant companion. Oh, come on. They must have noticed he's a little bit dead. <clears throat> oh, now what? Hang on a minute. 
What are you doing? Good female personage with the epithetrina. We thank you heartily for the use of your transport. However, we are of the opinion that her journey might best be concluded via bipedal propulsion. You're miles from anywhere. We have no wish to insult your hospitality, but the atmospheric standards in your land vehicle are fast plummeting towards a standard far below those of life support minima. You're talking about the smell, right? You noticed it too. Yep, I think they're probably noticing it on Pluto. You see, the thing is, the unpleasant perfumes coming from your friend there. Odor-mortified flesh. Let me call up some separate transport for him. Ah. Now, in his current condition, our fragrant friend has a slightly reduced capacity to fend for himself. We must, therefore, decline your considerate offer. If you would, however, be so kind as to give us a good shunt, we'll be on our way. Back in the car. Rena, that's not the way. It's my way, Harry. Now, nice and easy, fellas. Get back inside the car. Is that what I think it is? What do you think it is? A banana. No, Cadet Niven, it is not a banana. It is not even a member of the food family. It is what we humans call a gap. Let's go. Now, if I remember correctly, the correct procedure is to raise the arms thusly. Correct? And then we say, easy, sister. A dame could get plenty hurt playing with grown-up toys. Easy, sister. You put your hands down. No one's going to get hurt here. Now just pick up your friend and get back inside the car. Perhaps we have been unconsciously ambiguous. Much as we have enjoyed your company, we feel that we would now go our separate way. Ah! Now I see. You are threatening us, yes? I am, yeah. Come, Cadet Niven. <laughs> she must be a very lonely person. Rena, you really should think about getting in touch with your inner warrior. And you really should think about spending less time with your inner ballerina. I'm sorry it had to be this way. I share your regret, female one. Unfortunately, our directives, in the case of detection, are utterly unambiguous. Cadet Niven, please withdraw the supervisor. <laughs> what is that thing as a matter of interest? What are you, a bimble poos? It is a ray gun. Right, that's what I thought it was. Do you think it actually does anything? I'm not sure I want to find out. Stand clear, the doors. I don't think they went anywhere. I think it's us who've gone somewhere. Where? Where did we go? Wait a minute, I... Rena, they've sent us back in time. this fiercely trajectionalized liquid. I can only assume that it is a Terran equivalent of our own precipitation. Are you suggesting that on this bizarre planet, the rain never falls upwards? Perverse, I agree. But we must assume that is the case. Now, let us seek shelter. documentation concerning the natural enemies of the human species. Indeed, copious documentation. There are two main Terran predators, flies and bees. Yeah, that Flint is my considered and professional opinion that we should, in fact, go home now. Go home? As pronto missilistically as possible. Please? Cadet Niven. I fear perhaps you have savagely underestimated our current predicamentation. I'm very well aware of how predicamented we are. That is why I wish to go home. Let us assess our current situation. For how long have we been perambulating? 
approximately 175.7 Yuli starts. Must I constantly imprecate you to use Terran measuring systems? Apologies, cadet. That would be... We have been walking non-stop for 27 years, five months... I think you forgot to carry the glimbart. Ah, whoopsie. Right. A little over 11 Terran hours. Thereby exceeding projected mission maxima by a factor of 11. Indeed, the longest Terran incursion by a member of our species hitherto recorded was two Earth hours. Of course, the famous Glans Sperachak landing, wherein was discovered the Earth creature we now know as the carrot. I need hardly remind you then of the planet-wide panic accompanied by that particular mission overrun. Indeed, there was much furzulating in the Ferroderm that day. We have a mission, Cadet. A mission so important and secret that we are not of sufficient rank or status to be informed of its objectives. Are you prepared then, Cadet, to forsake that mission, whatever it is, before we have completed it? It's tempting. Well, I am not. <coughs> Has the supervisor shown any signs yet of reviving? <coughs> not a peep. Well, then, until the supervisor desists from his infuriating policy of non cooperation, we must lie low and comply with Terran behavioral patterns. What do you say? We're staying here? We must set ourselves up in human domiciles and act as fully fledged Terrans? Establish ourselves in a mated unit, get a job in an office abode, and iterate the phrase, Honey, I'm home, daily? Acquire offspring? perform hoedowns and clam bakes with alarming regularity, break inexplicably into song mid-conversation and perform elaborate dance routines, herd cattle to a place called Wyoming and fire projectile weapons at manly male threatening personages in black outfits. Thank you. Cadet Nevin, the longer our sojourn on this planet continues, the more I become convinced that your command of its procedures and conventions is wretchedly inadequate. I resent the scandalous implication that I failed to gain past standard in nine out of the 11 required tests and bribed a fellow student to get on this mission. I made no such imputation. Good, because it is an utter falsehood. O and K then. We must rise above our personal trepidizationings and carry on with our extremely accomplished human subterfuge as long as necessary. Very well. You are competent to attempt sane, without resorting to the panic technique of racing towards the wire fence, screaming, No, 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 I can't take it anymore. Of course. I'm not a complete mannequin, am I, you know? Very well, then. We will perambulate to the nearest inhabited zone and secure temporary lodgings. Just flies and bees? Yes, flies and bees and possibly Nazi U-boat commanders. Look at that. A thousand glittering lights. A million souls. And look. Over there. Dog eggs. 